Rural Heritage on RFD TV is brought to you by Rural Heritage Magazine, a bi monthly magazine featuring articles about farming and logging with draft animal power, small scale diversified family farming and homesteading, and other aspects of our rich rural heritage. Rural Heritage Magazine, borrowing from yesterday to do the work of today. For subscription information, please call 319 362 3027 or order online at www.ruralheritage.com. Before the development and widespread use of agricultural herbicides, farmers relied on field cultivation to control weeds. To better remove weeds from all sides of corn plants, farmers practiced checked corn planting. This system of planting allowed farmers to plant their corn in a grid pattern allowing them to cultivate a field along one axis and then cultivate at a perpendicular axis and even sometimes diagonally. Modern corn plants are grown in rows that require herbicide to keep down weeds until a canopy is created. Some farmers less concerned with achieving maximum yield are growing checked corn again, using horses and mules to cultivate the fields. The practice is better for the environment less costly and gives them more opportunities to drive their animals. We spent some time with a few Southern Iowa Teamsters who are giving checked corn planting a try. So we're going to shoot for four seeds per hill. Uh, four seeds per hill, a hill is 40 inches apart, that's one seed every 10 inches. That's about a population of 14,000 plants per acre. Today they plant 26 up to 36,000 plants per acre. Uh, these metal plates or the ones that came with this planter that I bought, uh, they lay right down in here like this, right up in the bottom. The seed box will close on it like that and then it meters out your seed. The uh, plates that came with my planter, they have 16 cells, but the cell is quite large. Uh, uh -oh. Today we have medium round seed that we're planting. So we've got some of these uh, later model planters, uh, plates uh, and an adapter piece that goes in here that will make this from a later model planter work with this old 90, 999 planter. These cells are smaller per cell, same number of cells per plate, but the cell is a lot smaller in, in area. You can see the difference there on those two. Uh, so we're hoping that we'll just get one seed kernel in each of those cells as it goes by the place. Um, there are some little wheels in here that keep the seeds knocked out of there, the extra ones. Um, so this is what we're going to try and it's still going to be guessing by golly. We're going to um, we're going to go ahead and uh, plant some corn out here on the gravel and then we're going to count the seeds and we hope we win. That's all we can do. Uh, Did you ever get yours to lay down in there? If that works better, put it in there. Put it up here, though. That way you press it down. Yeah. Then you just got to hold on to him as you tip him over. Or you got to see that's not easier. Didn't, didn't lay in. There, there it did. There we go. Right there's the seed cell dispenser. There's a little roller right there above that seed. And as this goes around, that roller is going to help push the seed down out of the cell right there. This is all, all the old planters worked. Then when they went to newer planters, they started using finger planters. Uh, John Deere was big in that, 7,000 John Deere planter. Uh, then, now today, they've gone back to plates. Now they have air that uh, keeps the, the plants in there. The air keeps the plant, the seeds up against the plate, and then a little brush brushes them off. So they've gone back in technology one way, but still they have air that sucks it up against the plate. Here we've got gravity. When we get out here to the field, we're going to string our wire out. Our wire is in that roll right there. You can see that roll of wire. We'll string that out the full length of the field. 
then uh, as we set up here, we're going to lay that wire up in here, and we're going to lay that wire right in this yoke. And this is all going to close like that. So the wire is going to come between these uh, rollers through this yoke, and every time there's a knot in the wire, this is going to go back, and then the wire will pop out of there and it'll spring forward. So you're going to hear it clicking as we drive down through the field. Every time a knot comes along, it pushes back, it opens a set of gates. There's two sets of gates in a John Deere planter. There's one gate up high and another gate down low. So as you're driving forward, it's metering out the seed into that gated area. When it hits the knot in the wire, it drops to the next gate. Then it drops to the next gate when it hits the next wire. So the, the, the drop from the gate to the dirt is only about that far. So depending on your speed, you're not going to vary where they land that way. Other planters had one gate that was up near the top. So they had a longer seed tube, a longer drop. And depending on how fast you were going, it would vary where that landed. So this is much closer to the ground. They said this was a better accurate system. The whole purpose for this, again, 40 inch on center, four kernels in a, in a hill every 40 inches. We do our job right today, we'll be able to cultivate this crossways later to get the weeds out. That is our whole purpose today in doing this. We're going to set up now, we'll put the horses on here, we've got some seed in the box. We're going to run down through here, see how many seeds drop out per foot. Then we're going to know we're shooting for 10 inches apart. There is a spot, a transmission on the planter. Technology is not new. Today, they have computers that say this part of the field is a lot better than that part of the field. So the computer makes the planter put more seeds in that part of the field. We had it back then too. There's three speeds you can put on this planter. With your foot you can change it. So we're going to shoot for four per hill again. But we're going to find that out here in a minute when we hook up. It's on. Ma, ma, ma. We got this little piece that we used up there, remember? We're probably going to have to slice it or else we're going to have to set it aside. The only way to get it in the ground is to push with your feet when you're running and then click it in.
kill me better when that dirt gets dried out a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. There. There. Okay. Now we're in the oak. So when we <clears throat> when we get to the end, you take your foot and you touch this lever and that. <laughs> Ooh. Get to the end, you take your foot and you touch this lever and that releases the wire and the wire will fly right out of there. So now we've turned around and we're resetting the wire for the next trip across the field. Get right in there. That's what drops it every 40 inches. Oh. The seed plate is going to meter it out at a constant rate. The little gates will hold on to the corn and then drop it every 40 inches. Get up. Get up. Hi, I'm Joe Mishka of Rural Heritage Magazine. I'm on location of one of the many events we cover that celebrates our rural heritage. If you enjoy our show, check out our magazine, where you'll learn more about the people that blend the past with what works today. You can save almost 20% off the newsstand price by subscribing at ruralheritage.com or chat with us at 877-647-2452. That's toll free, 877-647-2452. Here a farmer uses percherons to cultivate in one direction of a checked corn planted field. Here another teamster is using mules to plant in the same direction. Now they are cultivating in a perpendicular direction. The cultivator shovels are getting the weeds that were missed by the earlier passes. Yeah, you did. Once the corn is ripened and dry, it's ready to be harvested. Here it's being picked the old-fashioned way.
you put different plates in it to grind, or does it's, it you a, adjust it? They call it a burr mill. Okay. And it's got uh, a cone on top of a cone, and the cone on the bottom's got spurs coming out, and the cone on the top's got spurs going down. And so there's a, a large bolt right in the center and you tighten that bottom cone up into the top cone and then that decides how it makes coarse. it finer. Yep. Now we're a little coarse right here. You can see a lot of hole kernels. Sure. Uh, we might tighten that up a little bit. Uh, we, we had a lot of husks in there from last year's corn and uh, we had to open it up the other day just to get it finished up. Thanks for joining us today at Rural Heritage and RFD TV, where we borrow from yesterday to do the work of today. This program is available for purchase. To order your copy, please call 319-362-3027 or visit www.ruralheritage.com. Rural Heritage is a bi-monthly magazine dedicated to draft animal farming and logging, as well as other aspects of our rich rural heritage. It is published by Mishka Press, which also offers a complete line of back-to-the-land books, DVDs, and calendars. Call or write for a catalog or subscription information, or visit our website at www.ruralheritage.com.